We want this to be a time of uh, insight and encouragement for everyone. We're in the book of Amos. This will be our 48th exposition of this book. The 8th chapter, verses 11 through 13, will be where we're at. <coughs> now, the, f the fact that God is vengeful and repays uh, has been largely hidden from our generation. It's uh, something that people, professed Christians, do not think about very much. But this is something that really needs to be thought about. Amen. Because the scriptures tell us it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. It's... Men have invented uh, another God is what's happened in our generation. It's an it's a intellectual or mental God as compared to an idol or image. And their, their God that they've invented is like them. He has their values and does things the way they like to do things. Israel did this. God spoke to them about it, to the psalmist. He said, uh, Psalm 50, verse 21, These things thou hast done, that's sinful things, and I, I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before their, before thine eyes. That is, I'll, I'll rebuke you and point by point I'll let you know what I'm talking about. Amen. You thought I was like you. Now, in doing this, they... Uh, they conducted themselves like the heathens. That's exactly the thing they did. Here's what God said about the heathen. He said they, speaking of the idols of the heathen, they that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. So <laughs> their idols were just a projection of their own yeah. person and their own appetite. So that's... Yeah. This is what's happened in the Christian world. Yes, right. I, I know people don't like to talk about it, and they think it's being too critical, but, like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. There's a God being taught that's the kind of God people want. Yes, right. And if you don't preach that kind of God, you pretty soon will be having a new job. Mm -hmm. right. You don't believe that. A lot of people can tell you this, so. <laughs> people in this room, that's right. <laughs> now, see, God has spoken on this matter. Through John, 1 John 5, verse 20 tells us that we know the Son of God is come. I say we know the Son of God is come and has given us an understanding that we might know him that is true, and we are in him that is true even in his son, Christ Jesus, this, this God that Jesus is teaching us about, this is the true God. <clears throat> little children, he's using little children like he uses the books. Little children doesn't mean everybody. Little children means novices, beginners. He called the class was little children, young men, old men. See, little children, Keep yourselves from idols. He wasn't talking about images. He was talking about doctrinal gods. Keep, young people, keep yourselves from idols. Make sure you don't buy into these false gods that are being taught. That's your responsibility. Now, God isn't tolerant of this kind of condition. And we must, Amos is confirming this to us. 
See, what had happened with Israel and what's happened with the Christendom of our day is they've been swept up with the ways of the world, and they're going the way the world's going. The world changes its fashion, church changes its fashion. World changes the way it talks, church changes the way it talks. World changes how it attracts people, church changes how it attracts people. Uh, world changes its professional requirements, church changes its professional requirements. See, it's going along. It's serious. See, I, uh, it isn't like that I enjoy talking about these kind of things. But someone's got to talk about it. People have to stop hiding from this. This, this is sweeping people into hell. Pe do people understand this? People are being condemned because of this. God will not tolerate being worshipped incorrectly, known incorrectly, and having wrong views about him, and so forth. Well, that, that, doesn't, that has nothing to do, in particular, with what's done in the assembly. It has to do with knowing the Lord. Oh, yes. Many would accuse us of just arguing about what's done in the assembly, how you conduct your yeah. meetings and so forth. That's not what we're talking about. Yeah, well, that yeah that that bears on what's taught there. And, you know, it, it's true. Now, Amos, through Amos, God is making known how he deals with people like that. We don't have to guess about this, see. Yeah. When there's instance, when insincerity has been amply demonstrated, and it's God's nature to let it go, and it looks like he's letting it go. Uh -huh. See, he said to Israel, I kept silence. Yes. I kept silence. You thought I was just like you. I kept silence. Not because he was tolerant, yeah. but he was given ample time that when the hammer came down, you'd know there was a reason for it. Amen. Amen. Gives him ample time to recover, if they can recover. That's inherent with God's uh, manners. There's other people watching this. There's holy angels watching this. Principalities and powers in heavenly places watching this. The saints are watching this. And he's working so you'll know his judgment is not premature. Sometimes we mortals, we're premature in our judgments. I've made judgments that were just, it was just plain premature. I found out I, I didn't get all the facts. This isn't the way God is. His judgments aren't yes, amen. premature. But he lets things go till they just get out of hand and finally it gets to the point that he that departs from evil makes himself a prey. As Isaiah 59 says, it gets to the point where the Amos isn't popular. Gets to the point where Paul's maligned. He let, this is God's way. He lets it. He's teaching you. As soon as you see something that's slanted in the wrong direction, you got to start out right then to avoid it. You can't be assuming, well, people aren't as bad as it seems, and the things are all straightened out. No, you got to learn to hate iniquity Amen. and to love righteousness. In fact, the scripture says, ye that love righteousness, hate iniquity. Yeah. That's right. Now, it will become difficult when God punishes the people. It becomes difficult for some innocent people, like Daniel and Hananiah and Mishael and Azariah. They were caught up. They had to go into the Babylonian captivity. It wasn't because they sinned. It was just they were just yeah. carried away captive because of it. Young boys. Now, I trust you'll be able to receive the divine manner in all of this that we're going to talk about tonight because this is some text, let me tell you. Amos 11, 8, 11 through 13. 
Behold, uh, I say, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. Amen. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm interested to know what this means. Behold. A lot of versions leave this word out. There is a Hebrew word for this, but a lot of the more recent versions, they leave this out. Behold, some versions that recognize it say, hear this, or be certain of this, or lo, or look, or yes. The word is translated, behold, means to perceive through sight or apprehension. Perk up! Listen to what I'm saying, God said. Catch this and understand it. Don't miss the meaning of this. That's what lo. Behold, that's what that means. This kind of reception, one might say, is the mode of the kingdom of God. Amen. When God speaks, yeah. everybody's got to listen up. Yeah. Listen up. Amen. Concentrate on what's being said. Determine to understand it. Hear with understanding. Simply being exposed to the word of God's not enough, although it's necessary, but it's not enough. Mm-hmm. You've got to comprehend. Amen. See, Paul wrote to the Romans, have they not all heard? Faith comes by hearing. Yeah. Have they not all heard? Yeah. Yes, they all heard, but they didn't all believe, and believing is the point. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Hear and understand. This particular word is He's going to give, behold, this word he's going to give is not an assessment of men. This isn't what men thought. It's not a commentary on what men are doing. Not this word. It's not a threat. It's not a mere warning. It's a prophecy. This is something that's going to happen. This isn't something that might happen. This is going to happen. See, there's the words like this. God speaks. He's not saying, now weigh this out and see if this sounds reasonable. Some words he has, this is going to happen. You build your life around this. This is going to happen. It's appointed a man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. Don't deliberate about it. Just believe it and see the truth of it. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Don't just think about it. Perk up and listen about it. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Don't just think about it. Pay attention to it and take it in. What's the prophecy, Lord? Well, the days come. He doesn't say the days might come. The days come, saith the Lord. Some other versions say the days are coming. They're on the schedule. Mm. Yes, Judah. Before I get too far away from this point about the behold, don't just think about it. I thought of the word in the scriptures, be ye not hearers of the word only, but doers also. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to have book knowledge, and then there's experiential knowledge that you know from doing and experiencing the things that you can read about. Mm. And that's what doing and not only hearing does for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. The days come. The time, the time is coming. I said, see, days is like a, a period. Time is coming. The days are going to come. It's something God's determined. This is not the natural outcome of a human reaction. Like you've done this, you've done this, you've done. Now this is going to happen because you did this. It's, it's not like that. Yeah. It's not like a man going jumping off the top of a building and defying the laws of gravity. And gra- it's not like that. This is something that if God didn't make it happen, it wouldn't happen. Yeah, amen. Amen. 
you learn this that the God, God's kingdom does not operate on an automatic mode. Yeah, amen. Yeah. It's a God is active in His rule. Yeah, Jesus yeah. Is active in His rule. Uh, and when it says, uh, "You be not deceived, man, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap." It doesn't mean just because you sowed it, you reaped it. It means you sowed it, but God's going to make the reaping. Yeah, amen. Days come, saith the Lord. This is gonna be what I'm gonna this is what I'm gonna do. This is what you, Israel, has provoked me to do. It's on the calendar. It's coming. What is it, Lord? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna send a famine in the land. I'm gonna impose this famine on the people. They are not going to be able to cope with it. I'm going to send a famine on the land. Now, if we were referring to a famine of food, the earth would obey the Lord and refuse to yield a crop. That's not the kind of famine he's talking about here. He's not a famine of bread. Here in the days of Jacob, God called for a famine. Yeah. It affected the entire world. Here in the time of Elisha, God called for a famine. Several times God told Israel he would send a famine of bread. Yeah. See, there's places in the world that have had famines. Yeah. Some people have had famines for years now. Some people say, well, it's the soil. If we just teach people how to handle the soil, this is a lot of gobbledygook. This world is God's world. And in some places, he doesn't want crops to grow. And invariably, they're heathen places. Hmm? Yes, Sydney. Some people may may hear, but um, believing is the point. I thought of Judas and the Pharisees. They heard the truth from from the Son of God, but they didn't believe it. Yeah. That's what turned them away. That's right. That's right. A famine, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water. Not that. What kind of famine, Lord? A famine of hearing the word of the Lord. A fam, not of lack of printing of the word. A famine of hearing. Yeah, that's right. I am going to stop my word from being heard. Yeah, amen. I'm going to send a famine of hearing the word of God. Some versions say, in the end to divine revelation. That's it. I'm not going to talk anymore to this generation. That's actually what it means, too. The people would not hear from God. Yeah. See, I didn't think God would do that. Well, think again. Here he is. This is God talking here. No more messages are going to be delivered to them. To that generation. No more, man. No more. No more. Their prayers wouldn't be answered. No more. God would dry up spiritual resources. In the language of Isaiah 29:10, he'd cover the prophets. He'd cover the rulers. He'd cover the seers so they couldn't deliver any word. I'm shutting it off. Or not. This is serious stuff, and, we're, and it gets more serious as we go along here. I really want to see you to see this, and to be able to correlate this with what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Amen. The people would not understand because they couldn't hear. It'd be a period like existed in the world, and modern history called the Dark Ages. Yeah. Yeah. Dark
Dark Ages was spiritually dead. Dominated the world, some may say up to a thousand years. The least period is from 476 to 800. The art was affected, singing was affected, yeah. knowledge was affected. The world, if you look at art to the Dark Ages, it looks plastic and unreal. Literature was corrupt. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it was a time when God did yeah. in this world what he did back there. Yeah, right. He sent a famine mm -hmm. of hearing the word of God. It's the most arresting prophecy. It illuminates what has happened in our own time. Yeah. God would impose this time on Israel because they'd not taken his word seriously. They felt free to corrupt it. They had Moses in his writings. They had the prophets in person, but they conducted their lives just as though neither either one existed. Yeah. The God said, all right, I've endured this now for several hundred years and I'm not enduring it anymore from this generation. Now I'm not going to talk to it anymore. Yeah. Now these kind of things have happened before in history. During the time of Samuel, it is written, the word of the Lord was precious, there was no open vision. So, was a big reduction in divine communication. There was a time when Saul inquired of the Lord, but, quote, the Lord answered him not. He inquired of the Lord. Yeah. The Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by the prophets. 1 Samuel 28, 6. I'm establishing God can be provoked to where he stops talking to you. Asaph wrote of a time... When he said, we see not our signs, there is no more any prophet, neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. Psalm 74, 9. That time came. Ezekiel wrote this. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest and counsel from the ancients. Ezekiel 7, 26. Micah said, the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the, and the dark shall be over them. Hmm? Yeah. Zacharias spoke of a time when there was no shepherd. So can this happen? <laughs> yes, it can happen. But the God that's being chronicled today would not do this. This is the true God. These were times, as I just read about from the prophets, of spiritual famine. It was God's response to disinterest, complacency, and despising the words of the Lord. This is how God responded. So men may be patient with this condition and say, well, they'll come around. Eventually they'll come around. This is not the way God is. This is our introduction to a facet of the divine nature we do well to be acquainted with. Yeah. God is he's surely kind. He is. Mm -hmm. He's patient and he's gracious. But when his overtures are ignored, there's an aspect of his nature that's awakened that you don't want awakened. What will this what will this involve, Lord? This a famine of hearing the word of God. What what what's going to happen? They shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Brother Jason. Before you get too far out of that first point there, uh, there's a couple of parallels between this famine hearing the word of the Lord. Isaiah said something similar. He said the and Jesus quotes this yeah. 
he said the people will be, they'll hear, but they won't hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll right. see, but they won't, they won't see. see. They yeah. won't perceive yeah. it. That's right. Jesus was asked, Jesus was always preaching to the people in parables. And his disciples said, why do you do that? Mm -hmm. And he quoted that verse. That's right. That's right. It was it was a it was another famine in a sense. Even That's though right. even though Jesus himself was the Word of God, mm -hmm. he spoke to the people in parables, which was a way of concealing That's right. truth. That's right. The disciples themselves had to ask Jesus to explain the parables Amen. to them. Amen. And he said, "Blessed are your ears, because yeah. they hear. They got inf inside information." Amen. But the the crowds. It was like a judgment of God. He spoke right. to them in parables because the he says Jesus actually said the people's hearts have become right. dull. So there's a that's a similar judgment. That's right. The the people there's the Son of God Himself, mm -hmm. and they don't know it. That's yeah. right. And they don't understand what He's saying. Yeah. Now in our day, it says in, it says in the first chapter of Hebrews, in the past God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets, yeah. like mm -hmm. Amos. At many times and in various ways, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. By his son. Yeah. Now, if you reject that revelation, yeah. God doesn't have anything else to say to you. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so you right. you are at that point, you are you will enter in to an arena of spiritual famine. That's right. Or or as Paul said in Thessalonians, if you receive not the love of the truth, yeah. You will you will be you will be deceived by That's something right. else will get you. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> they'll they'll wander, looking for truth, looking for a word from God. Now this is a people. Keep in mind, this is a people God chose. Yeah. Right? That's right. This is the people God blessed. They were even chosen because of someone else, yeah. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But such a people were severely would be severely judged. They couldn't lay claim to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob now because they, they didn't have the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They weren't the same kind of people Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were. Now, the following set of circumstances are created by an imposed, this is an imposed famine. They shall wander. Other versions read they'll stagger. They'll go wandering. They'll move. They'll wander everywhere. Search everywhere. Wander around the country. Drift from one end of the country to the other. The they of reference is Israel. Who had provoked God to anger with her ways. From sea to sea, I gather that's the Dead Sea, or the Sea of Galilee, unto the Mediterranean Sea. That would be the, the entire land of Canaan. They go north and east. North and, yeah. and east. That, that, that is that away from, they, they'd hunt all around Canaan and in Canaan, they couldn't find any word from God. They'll run to and fro, hither and yon, making diligent search, leaving no stone unturned, trying to find a word from God. Doing this to seek the word of the Lord. Searching for the word of the Lord, the NIV says, looking for a revelation from God, the Net Bible says. Contemporary English, seeking a message from me, the Lord, as he quote God, seeking a message from me, the Lord. Looking for a message from the Lord. The Amplified Bible says, inquiring for and requiring it as one requires food. <laughs> well, we want things that got so bad we want we want to hear a word from God no word yeah. they shall not find it that's a famine now we're talking about a famine always come back that's yeah. right that's yeah. exactly right that's right that's exactly right mm -hmm. so it should be in vain fearful thing now to fall into the hands of the living God don't provoke the Lord. Are you stronger than he is? Amen. I assume everybody here is very serious about the Lord. 
But if you're not, don't leave this house in that state. You get serious and get serious right now. Because God doesn't give a schedule when things like this happen. Searching for the word of the Lord. They did not, uh, they couldn't find it. Now, while others have been falling away and become absorbed, there were some people who, even during this famine, kept fellowship. Then, and it was during a, a famine, but hearing the word, they that feared the Lord spank off on none with another. Yes, that's right. The Lord heard it. So they kept they kept alive. Uh -huh. yes. The famine didn't meet absolutely no one in the area. Mm -hmm. It was those that had chosen not to seek the Lord. Seeking them wouldn't work now. Mm -hmm. She said, just seek the Lord. Well, there comes a time when you can't seek. Yeah. You seek and not find. Those who had given themselves over to the transgression, they couldn't find a word from God. Yeah. Now Solomon said something similar to this, referring to wisdom. Oh. Proverbs 128. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but shall not find me. Hmm? Now here's something else Solomon said. Then I beheld all the work of God that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, farther, though a wise man think to know it, yet he shall not be able to find it. See, so Solomon gave us a hint yeah. about this too. And Jesus, when he was going back to heaven, he said, A little while am I with you, and then I go to him that sent me, and ye shall seek me. And shall not find me. Through Hosea, God said, I will hedge up the way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's possible to think a hedge, hedge up the way with thorns make it, the person become miserable. Well, that's true, but what about this shall not find her path? God kept her from finding her appointed path. Yeah, right. God kept her uh -huh. from finding her appointed path. Uh -huh. It's a famine, see. Yeah. Amen. And I'd be remiss if I didn't call to your attention the famine of hearing the word of the Lord that's extant in our day. Yeah. As it was in Malachi's day, there are those who have maintained their love of the truth and are surviving. I, I, can, I can testify. I, if you'll bear with me, I would like to testify Amen. how I've kept alive. Because a lot of people I knew, they, did, they weren't able to stay alive. Yeah. I kept alive when I saw there was a defection taking place. I was a much as much of an I was an adult to the point that I knew that something was happening that wasn't right. There were too many fads, theological fads and fashions going on, and what it took to be a minister was changing, and what qualified a person to preach was changing, and I decided I'm going to hang on my way. I'm going to stick with Scripture. I'm going to learn the Scripture. I don't care if it's fashionable or not, or if anyone likes it or not. That's what I'm going to do. I was criticized for it, but I kept on my way, and I survived. Amen. I'm still here, Amen. and I've kept the faith. My family and I have chose to survive here. We're surviving. Amen. If we hadn't have started what we got here, I have questions about whether I could have survived or not. Yeah. I had to be 
with those that feared the Lord and spake often one with another. Amen. I couldn't make it, see? Mm -hmm. My life was with the Lord, was and remains. I cannot be sustained with a hit and miss type thing. Uh -huh. yeah. I got to have it every day. And I can't take it in small doses. Okay, what about when you worked? I just had to go without sleep. That's what I had to do. I had a demanding job. Like we're talking 100 hours a week. And I had to keep myself alive. Because I was preaching four times a week. I had to stay alive. I'm testifying to you what happens when they that fear the Lord in one of these times uh -huh. don't cave in. Yeah. Amen. And God will give you the strength yes. to make it through there. Find someone that can speak with them frequently. Mm -hmm. They met, they spoke often. Yeah, right. They weren't talking about the Super Bowl. Say you against the Super Bowl, pertin near. <laughs> it's a distraction I am. Now the rarity of sounding forth the word of God in our Lord, in our day, particularly the gospel, I am affirming, is a judgment from God. Amen. Because I don't see how that could have happened. Yeah. Uh -huh. Otherwise. I'm saying the church <coughs> dawdled around Amen. too long. Mm -hmm. And now the buildings are spiritual mortuaries. Yeah. Everybody really knows this, but not many people will say it, but that's the way it is. A famine yeah. of, of hearing. Don't yeah. well, miss what it says. Mm -hmm. Of hearing. Yeah. Now that these these people he's talking to here, these are people. These are not honest seekers. <coughs> these, these are people who who had already turned away from what God had said. Mm -hmm. God had already spoken these people. Mm -hmm. They turned away from what yes. He had already said, mm -hmm. yes. and so God yes. said, "Well, if, since this is the case, you're not going to get anything else, yeah. even if you search yeah. for it diligently." Yeah. Now we have a parallel to this in our in our times there. It's kind of common knowledge, actually. There, there are supposedly lots of people in in Western culture who are spiritual seekers. This term is used a lot. Yeah. There's right. even special services for mm -hmm. seekers. Yeah. But there are there, but nobody's finding anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that, it's not because they're honest seekers, because we know that because Jesus said, if you seek, you'll find. If you ask, mm -hmm. it'll be given. Or not. But they've already rejected what God has yeah. revealed. And so because of that, they're seeking and they're not finding. Yes. There's nothing else. Yeah. They, they were seeking a word from God. Mm -hmm. But it was, a, it was like a frantic. It was like Saul. He really did want to hear from God. <laughs> but it was, it was a frantic search. Having already rejected. Yeah, that's right. He had rejected God's overtures, and so God doesn't like start over. Yeah. Yes. The way of saying, remember when Esau he sought for repentance with tears, but he still didn't get it. This is what we're talking about. Even though yeah. they want, supposedly want to find, God is going to withhold it from them because in the day in which the light was shining, they didn't try to get it. Yeah. I want to emphasize again: this is a famine of hearing of the word of God being spoken. It was a famine of that. It was not going to be spoken to that generation anymore. Mm -hmm. That was he poured out the spirit of deep sleep, covered up the prophets, covered up the seers, stopped the communication of the word. Look back and see, I can, where it just, it just gradually tapered off yeah. at the last 30 years. Now you don't hear it practically at all. Yeah. None. But there was a time when you, when you did. Quite often, but over over the years, yeah. it's just uh, it's slowly reduced. It's not like it just quit all of a sudden. 
Yeah, it's just, it just tapered and down. Yes, yeah, as, as Jason suggested there, he doesn't cast his pearls before swine either. I was going to say, God always does what is right. Mm -hmm. And there's a time when it's not right for God to keep talking. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, now, I'm persuaded that there comes, a, there is a time that comes, a person that rejects the word of the Lord, when they really want the door to be opened. But they don't have oil. Now those yeah. virgins wanted in. Make no mistake about it. They wanted, they, yeah. they, <laughs> but they ran out of oil. Right. And this is this is the kind of thing that precedes this. Mm -hmm. There's a certain. Not only does the heart grow hard with sin, God gets more distant. Mm -hmm. He gets more distant with sin, and there comes a time He decides that's that's it. Mm -hmm. We do that too. I mean. Whenever someone's that way, we, we may try to convince or whatever, yeah. and then eventually as someone is doing certain things, we just distance ourselves to a point where we don't want to have anything to do with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and yet in our generation, we have assemblies of fifteen to 30,000 people meeting, claiming that they're meeting in the name of the Lord to worship and to honor God and to hear the truth. It's a well, thing. yeah, I I think that's what others say about these assemblies. I don't think what these. No, I don't hear many people saying that about themselves. I hear people say we're here to, but I don't hear the people saying that. See, well, that's one of the things sectarianism does. You got one person who speaks for the multitude, but if the multitude were seeking. They wouldn't want a, just one more Sunday morning activity. Yeah. Yeah. You, I want you to see this, that this doesn't negate those that seek will find, but that also assumes a period when seeking can be done and God honors it. And he said, here, I'm going to send a famine of hearing. It isn't going to be spoken. And folk may remember when it was spoken and want it to be spoken again, but it will not be. In that day, the fair virgins and young men shall faint for thirst. For what? Thirst. You say, well, they didn't want the real thing. I'm not, I'm not sure they didn't want the real thing. Any more than I'm not sure the virgins didn't want to really be at the marriage. The prophet speaks of two things that will occur in this uh, uh, div divinely imposed famine. The fair virgins and the, first he said they'll, they'll search They'll search the width of the land, go to all around throughout the whole land, go north and go east, trying to find somebody that'll speak the word of God. But the prophets have all been covered up. The seers have been covered. God isn't delivering any word. Now, this was the case of the generation Jesus preached to. He talked about this generation, and he didn't speak favorably of it. There were some people there, but as a whole, it was a rejected generation. As a whole. Fair virgins and young men, your lovely young women and strong men, young men. You might call them the Israel of tomorrow. Not be able to come to me. <laughs> How would they fare during this famine? The beautiful young women, strong young men, they're, they're thirsty. And it they finally just give up. They faint, they get so weak, it just 
give up. Can't find anything. Faint for thirst. Some versions say they'll be feeble, they'll perish, they'll grow faint and weary, they'll dissipate, they'll become weak, they'll collapse. Why will they? Because God's not, he sent a famine of hearing. <laughs> the, word, the word isn't being spoken at large. Spiritual deprivation. Now learn this. No form of human wisdom can deal with spiritual privation, deprivation. There's no expertise, human expertise, that can successfully deal with being deprived of the Word of God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In the, a famine of hearing of the Word. Uh -huh. there, and God shows that. Amen. They just faint for thirst. It doesn't say at last they found it. No, they fainted uh -huh. for thirst. Right. See, moral disciplines and procedures... They won't fill an empty heart. They won't do it. Yet people continue to try it. They continue to engage in these kind of efforts. The word translated faint, it's an interesting word. It's a very big word. It means to cover or become encrusted or faint or be languid, weak and listless. It's used to express ex exhaustion from fatigue and hunger. They search, they search, they search, getting weaker, weaker, search, weak, search, weak, finally just pff, yeah. expire. In a spiritual famine, the individual is not going to find nourishment on their own. Yeah. In Malachi's day, it was found with they that feared the Lord. There was a nucleus of people. Apparently during this famine he's talking about here. There was a nucleus of people that held on their way. If you could make it, you, you've, if you're in a spiritual famine, you can't study your way out of it. See, I'm going to just stay at home and study the Bible. That's not going to work. You're going to have to be with someone that's hearing from God. Somebody to whom God is speaking. You got to make. You got to find those people right. somewhere. You're not going to discover it on your own. Where there's a famine. Yeah. I'm talking about where there's a famine. You're not going to find it on your own. You're going to have to find somebody who, like Joseph, has stored up the grain. Yeah. See, now I told you what I did. Yeah. I stored up grain. I saw what was happening. I didn't see the full implications of it, but I saw what was happening. I didn't like it, so I stored up yeah. for my survival. I stored up. I stowed away some grain. Mm -hmm. So when there was a famine of hearing the word of God, I had some stored up. Yeah. I, I had something I could live on. I found out somebody else, they had something we could live on. We began to share the corn. Yeah. That's how the, the only way you can survive. You, yeah. you can't find it on your own. You can't do it. Not during a famine. Not during this famine of hearing the word of God. Now let's, uh, let's like apply this uh, truth. It teaches us that adverse conditions can be caused by God himself. Yes, amen. Violence filled the face of the earth. God destroyed humanity with the flood. Shinar, they decided to build a make tower and a city and make a name for themselves and God yeah. destroyed the work. Sin was found in the camp of Israel and they lost the battle to a little piddly nation. Mm -hmm. City, not even a nation, a city. Mm -hmm. Because of Israel's obstinance, God caused the hearing of the word to cease resulting in a spiritual famine. Now here's something else that happens. When the hearing of the word, there's a famine of hearing of the word, false prophets crop up all yeah, over the place. Right. Yep. Uh -huh. They can operate. Uh -huh. yep. You say, how come there's so many of these wrong things being taught? Because there's a famine of hearing the word of God, and that has occasioned the rise of yeah. mm -hmm. strong delusion. that attacked Jeremiah. That's right. And made a false prophecy. And other yeah. prophets that were in 
in Babylon, whom the king of Babylon burned in the fire yeah. after they made, but they were Jewish prophets. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Most informed believers know today that it's very difficult to find a devoted group of people. You can go some and hear something. I mean, I understand that. We're not saying that nothing can be heard, but nothing of consequence is being heard. See, the, the gospel, when it's preached, it has power. But we, we're we hearing a lot of powerless proclamations. There, it's not a powerful, life-altering message. And it's happening. Most people know that it's it's happening. Is there any sound reason for thinking that God would tol would not tolerate indifference in Israel, but he will tolerate it in the church? Is there any thing that would lead somebody to think that? Or were these things written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come? Jesus is the last spokesman from heaven. There ain't going to be any more. So he's got to be heard. If he's not heard, as Brother Jason said, there's nothing more to be said. There isn't anything more to be said. You can even study Proverbs and get nothing out of it. Nothing more to be said. The Lord's gone on record. There's an appointed day when he's going to make up his jewels. This is Malachi 3.17. Going to make up my jewels. Those are the people that will survive the famine. They don't need additional. See, they, they've stored up what they had. That's the point. They stored up what they had. So without shame, I, I confess my preference for the jeweled people. That's my preference. If I can't find any of those jeweled people, that's who I'm going to look for. Because I know in this day and age, I don't know if the famine's reached its peak or not. We may only be in the second year of the famine. Like uh, Jacob and his sons were when he came to Egypt. It's just a second year. Five more to go. So I don't know how far along this is, but I know this is a time to make sure you're in the group that pleases God. Whose assemblies he notes. They don't care whether, anyone, whether men know them or not. Is of no consequence. Does God recognize them? Does he say, these are, <laughs> when I make up my jewels, these are, these are the people. These are the people, of course, who walk in the spirit and live by faith. Be a survivor, brother. Be a survivor. Amen. And uh, hide the word of God in your heart yeah. that you might not sin against him. To those who keep the word, yeah. Jesus went on record. Those who keep the word, I'll manifest myself. Yeah. I'll manifest myself to him. My father and I will come in with him and sup with him. When this famine hits, as I think I think it has started at least pretty dismal. This makes the future pretty dismal. All right, any of you have a word you'd like to add tonight? Yes. I just wanted to give thanks for this word. Um, I remember before we moved here, um, Brother Tony telling me that there, there could be a point that I would not be able to hear God. And and that stuck with me. And that that's, I, I think I, that's like one thing that stuck with me. I did not want to be at that point where I could not hear God. Oh, amen. So I want to give thanks that the Lord made made this word available. Amen. Brother Jason, you had a word? Yeah, I was just thinking of some. There are some. There are some pretty disturbing examples of yeah in the scriptures of people, people who were very blessed to have been in the proximity of some great revelation, mm -hmm. 
they rejected it, mm -hmm. and and because of that, they were rejected. They were they were what you they were like irretrievable. They were they were uh, I'm trying to think of the word. Uh, there's a there's a term for it. It's not coming to my mind, but I'm thinking of example of Esau. Esau. He sought he sought the Lord. He bless me too, Father. Bless yeah, me yeah. too. And then I'm I'm, I'm thinking of Saul. Yeah, Saul's another. And uh, mm -hmm. Samuel said, "No, Saul, the, the kingdom's been torn from you. That's just yeah. the that's the end of the matter." Yeah. Um, mm. And he went so far down as to consult a medium, yeah. mm. trying to he wanted some kind of divine revelation. That's right, that's so he right. went to a medium, a yeah. witch. Mm. And then I think of Judas. Judas, Amen. Judas yeah. uh, was right there with Jesus the whole mm. time. And he felt remorse. He, I betrayed innocent blood. But then he went out and hung himself. Yeah. Yeah. The whole generation that heard Jesus was in this. Jesus said this is the Sodom and Gomorrah. The, if, if this stuff had been said in Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. they'd remain. Yeah. Yeah. He said the, 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 gener, the Queen of Sheba is going to rise up and yeah. condemn this generation because she yeah. came to hear Solomon. Yeah. The one greater Solomon. So, so there is some, there is a principle there that if if a certain amount of revelation is rejected, mm -hmm. yeah. there is no return. It's like it's a Hebrew six kind of a yeah, right. those that's who've right. once been enlightened to have yeah. taste the heavenly gift. If they fall away, yeah. well, they what is there left? There's yeah. nothing. There's not a high. It's not like okay, well you've refused this, you've refused this revelation, but there's a second revel, but there isn't a second revelation. That's right. No. Yeah. There's Amen. nothing after Christ. That's right. Yeah. That's... I think everyone that's, that's actually in this room right now, at some point in time, had to make a decision. Am I going to stay someplace where I know I'm not getting what I need? And 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 uh, for myself, I knew I, I've, I've got to get there. I've got whatever it costs. It really doesn't make any difference. I mean, if you're going to give your, what were you going to give your life for? Yeah. But... Uh, for myself, you know, I just got done building a brand new house. Well, what was I going to do? Well, what is that compared with life? And I knew I was dying. I knew I was dying. I wasn't getting fed. And I, I anyway, the Lord showed me. In fact, actually, you mentioned just in passing, when are you going to move here? I, I never, I never even considered it. And yet, yeah. is that, that's, why? Why am I holding on to something that I'm going to give up anyway? Mm -hmm. And 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 I think everyone here can testify that that they saw something, that that they heard something. The word was going out from here. Now I'm not saying this is the only place. It's not the only place, but it is a place, and it's a place that the Lord showed me and many others here. And so I can understand what what this prophet's saying. That you 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 you've got to guard. You got to guard the place where you're hearing. That's right. You know, with with, it's not worth giving up, giving up your life for whatever conveniences we've had to give it up to be here. It's worth it. Amen. 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 Just considering the scripture uh, examples of famine, I don't remember one that was never ending. That, that the famine just continued yeah. on sure. forever. Uh, even in the case of Joseph, he said. We, we still have a long time to go, but there was an end. There was a time yes. that was designated that that would come to an end. And I remember the scripture that talks about the knowledge of the Lord covering the earth yeah, yeah. as the waters cover the sea. So we, while we live in this time of famine, we hope to the end yeah. when the Lord is going to bring an abundance again. Amen. Amen. And then we'll have life from the dead. He, he deals with generations. Yes, that's right. So it even said... He punished it under the third and fourth generation, uh -huh. but not, it didn't shut it off forever. And you're right, it didn't shut it off forever. So if you're, if you see, see things dwindling, start storing up. Yes, amen. <laughs> right. Amen. I mean, even your, per, like your personal life, uh -huh. just you, if you feel like you're, kind of losing a little bit of ground, start storing up. Yeah. Uh -huh. Store up. Yes, amen. And it'll 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 take you through the famine. Amen. I'm brother Jim. Brother Garrett. Yes. Good. Um, I was I was thinking through the lesson that we are in a time of 
where people think that it's just thunder. They hear, a, <laughs> yeah, that's they right. just hear a word from God, and they think it's just thunder. They have no clue what you're talking about. There could be some epoch, epochal revelation that you're in part of someone, and they're just like, what? Yeah. And just yeah. It's like a, they really don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And I kind of experienced that quite a bit um, in Dallas. And I just had, it was, it was very uh, a unrestful time. Oh, yeah. I just could not, I mean, just, there were a few, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, frustrating in your spirit. It was yeah. so frustrating because you labor in the word and you're expecting to get something something back. That's what we do in this time of uh, uh, keeping each other and then being fret mm-hmm. at the same time. But we are definitely in a time where we just, uh, just people just think it's just thundering outside. Yeah, yes. Amen. Amen. Who Amen. was it over here, um, Sister Batty? Yeah, I was also considering this matter of the famine in Joseph's day and how his, when his brothers came to him and they they were they received some grain to take back home with them, but those provisions ran out. Eventually, they had to go back and get more, and so the provisions that they received when they were farther away were not as. Um, they didn't last, so they. But yeah, whenever they readily came, available, yeah. Right. Whenever they came into Goshen, however, they the they were in the land then. And so you can see how the closer you are to the source, the the better the provisions are, the more you're going to be strengthened because you're going to have a, a greater supply That's of, right. of what is necessary. So I can see how if you, you want to live as close to Christ as possible yes. and to continue to draw even more, more close so that you'll be able to be made strong to, in, to in, overcome the day. In Canaan, they had to buy in batches, apparently a year at a time. But in when they were in Egypt, Joseph cared for them the, on, a, on a regular basis. They didn't have to buy and store and kept them alive. That, yes, yes, but Jason. I, I want to. I hope I'm not. I hope this isn't going to offend anyone. But my, our experience, I, I hear a lot of us saying. Where I was, I just couldn't find anything until I came here. Mm-hmm. Our experience has been, we've been out a lot of different places, a lot of different churches. Our experience has been that everywhere we went, we found remnants. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Every, everywhere we went, mm-hmm. every church we've been in, mm-hmm. we found the remnant. There were people that Ada and I, Ada and I still talk about people mm-hmm. from our first congregation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We can remember these people. They were sensitive people. They weren't perfect people, but they were sensitive people. Mm-hmm. They, they were people who loved God. They loved mm-hmm. us. They loved the people of God. Every single place we've gone, we've found the remnant. That's what you have to do. Yeah. You've already mm-hmm. said it. Yeah. That during a famine, you've got to seek out That's right. the remnant. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you, they're everywhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. we the same they're thing. everywhere. Mm-hmm. They're not just here thing. in Joplin. They're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Most of the places that we found a remnant, they weren't driving the, they weren't driving the institution. That's the, that's the thing that we've, we've talking about. But you are right. There is that remnant. And they were just as glad to see you. <laughs> yeah. Back though, yeah. and uh, they really couldn't. Yeah, and and I found out they really weren't really able to sustain hardly uh, one another and others, and they were just kind of like getting by themselves. Yeah, I, I found pretty much that the same thing. thing yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, but it wasn't owing to any deficiency in their heart. Right. right. Yeah. Spacious radio. Spiritualism and scholasticism is an example of bodies of people that seek the Word of God, but mm-hmm. they're seeking it in order to use it for their mm-hmm. own purposes. Yeah. And that's really what Israel was doing, too. They were distorting the Word of God mm-hmm. in order to justify actions that were completely against the Word of God. Jesus found them in the same condition when he walked upon the yeah. earth. Yeah. You remember it? The psalmist said that of God that he keeps his people alive in the famine. Yes. 
So we say a famine of the hearing of the word. We don't mean everybody died, which addresses what Brother Jason was saying. It doesn't mean everybody died. It means that it wasn't in the general environment was that there wasn't any word. But there, but he knows how to keep them alive in a famine if he has to send them to a widow lady. <laughs> but she did have, she did have something to work with. Wasn't much, but it was something to work with. So that's what you look for. Does the person have something to work with? They may just have a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil, but we'll, we'll start with there. Make me a little cake, and let's get on with the work. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, let's have a word of prayer. <laughs> Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee that You do keep people alive in the famine that have a heart set upon Thee. We're very grateful for this, Heavenly Father. We regret that it appears as though we live in a generation that is experiencing a spiritual famine. But we thank you that the word of the Lord, when it's ingested, endures and nourishes and enables us to be alert to find other of your jewels that are scattered here and there. Help us to remember this remnant regularly in our prayers and to pray for their survival and that more would be added to their number. In Jesus' name, amen.